hello. So I <clears throat> just climbed a pretty good hill, so I'm out of breath. I wanted to go to the, the bottom of the course of the motocross hill climb event that I saw last week and check it out. So I'm here now <laughs> and it's pretty cool actually. So this is the ramp that they used on the start. You see the start line there. And then here, here's the beginning part. And I want you to look at that hill. Now that hill is pretty scary for me. I mean, standing here, it looks a lot steeper than I think it looks on camera. It's very steep. And that's just the first gradient. And then, as you saw in the video last week, um, at the top, it's very, very steep. There's two extremely steep spots that most people don't, don't uh, achieve. They don't make it up. So it's pretty interesting. And it was a cool event. So this road, you can go wind up to the top there, to the top of the course, where the mm, place is that I play Patank. And then down here, you can look down at the church by Vimeiro. Yeah, so pretty cool. Okay, here I am at the top of the hill climb. So you can see, more or less, there's quite a bit of elevation here. And um, over here was where they had the celebrations, the beer, the snacks. Down here. And that's the top of the hill climb, the ultimate top. So there's a really steep bit there and then there's another steep bit just below there. <laughs> it was exciting. It was fun to watch. Okay, so um, wanted to talk about one thing real quick and that's the difference between conspiracy fiction and conspiracy theories. So you all know what a scientific theory is, right? It's a uh, almost akin to a law of nature, and it's backed up by multiple lines of empirical evidence. That's important. You know what empiricism is. So anyway, you have gravity, the laws of thermodynamics, Darwinian evolution, neo-Darwinism, and many, many others that we could talk about. Some are backed by lots and lots of evidence, some with less, but as time goes on with the scientific tools we have and equipment, including methodologies, mathematics, logic, computers, whatever, data, big data, we're able to learn more and more about these questions concerning how nature works and refine our theories. So they're never written in stone like the Ten Commandments. They're subject to um, refinement, updates, and so on. So anyway, this is a preamble for what I've been doing on my social media this morning, what I did this morning, which is regarding what happened at the Trump rally. I'm not going to use the A word or anything like that because I don't want to make, uh, you know, the big uh, cloud capital companies angry with me. I don't want to piss off their algorithms. But anyway, you know what happened. So um, <clears throat> a conspiracy fiction is a story that people tell. It may have kernels of truth in it. Okay, now it's a little bit windy here, so I'm going to shift. I hope the dynamic range isn't too bad. 
Anyway, so you have science, uh, sorry, science fiction. You have <laughs> um, conspiracy fiction, okay? And that genre is, is pure storytelling. Now, all stories have kernels of truth in them. So there may be bits and pieces in the story, in the conspiracy fiction that are true and reasonable and logical. But that doesn't make the theory true. In fact, a conspiracy fiction is just a story. It's pure fiction, has no truth in it, does not reflect nature in any sense, especially not empirically. So a uh, conspiracy theory, on the other hand, is purely theoretical. It's uh, in the scientific sense, as I said before. It's backed by empirical evidence, multiple lines of empirical evidence. So when you look at this event that happened um, at the rally, uh, obviously people on both sides of the same coin, by the way, because the system that I'm talking about is pathological, it's sick, uh, it's, it's omnicidal, it's dangerous and destructive. But most people don't know this. Notice that I didn't use the word believe this, because if you study carefully uh, multiple lines of evidence, empirical evidence, you will find that our current way of managing and doing things is pathological. It's cancerous. The growth that we are obsessed with leads to mass extinction and possibly our own extinction someday. But be that as it is. Um, what happened is going to generate all manner of conspiracy theories. Also, the spin meisters, the spin doctors, the PR people, the think tankers, the marketers, the media, the propagandists, and all of that ilk are going to spin stories to distract people, uh, to satisfy their markets, and so on. Uh, their audience capture, and we're all going to be distracted by it. We're going to be looking at this shiny new thing in the news, and we're going to get all excited and emotional about it, regardless of where you sit. Uh, I think the sickest territory in the global economic and political system is the middle road, business as usual, centrist politics, because it leads nowhere. It's the definition of insanity. So um, we're going to watch this shiny thing for a while and then something else is going to come up between now and the election, between now and the inauguration. And after the inauguration, it's going to be the same old, same old, the definition of insanity. And it will continue. The idea that we can get enough people educated and shift their consciousness to such a degree that they would push back against the system, a la what Nate Hagens and other uh, decent, like-minded people discuss when trying to be positive, is a fantasy. It's Pollyannish. It's not going to happen. It's very difficult to get people behind uh, a new idea or a new way of doing things, a new culture. And the problem is we're all addicts. We're addicted to this particular scheme of things and all of its shiny bits and all of its fun little things that we can play with. And we're not going to give any of this up. It's never going to happen. So we're in for a journey where we have a very difficult fall, a hard crash. Uh, and it's going to be extremely destructive and horrifying and dangerous. And we're seeing it play out around the world, but it hasn't hit you yet. You're fine. You live in a nice neighborhood, you have money, you have investments that are paying, and so on. So you're good. But other people around the world are already feeling the impact of the death throes of this cancerous system. These are not conspiracy theories. There are numerous ideas and studies and theories about various aspects of this thing, neoliberalism, uh, that rely on multiple lines of empirical evidence, okay? 
It's not just pulling ideas out of the hat to win an argument. Uh, we can see what's happening to the world, to uh, the climate, to ecosystems, to habitats, to species of life on Earth, to human psychology, to human health, to human, to society. Why am I saying human? <laughs> so anyway, homo hubris. Uh, yeah, we can see the impacts of all of this, and, and it's not good, but you don't see that. I get it, and that's fine. And you don't want to see it because things are good right now. So don't worry about it. I really think that if you want to go to Wall Street and see if you can start the next, next big hedge fund or something uh, that invests heavily in the military industrial complex for the sole purpose of getting filthy, dirty, stinking rich, or if you want to start another Ponzi scheme, or if you want to be a, a confidence man like Elon Musk or whatever, go ahead. Uh, why not? At least you'll be super rich flying around in a private plane and on private yachts, uh, having a ball, playing the big shot uh, during the end of days. I wouldn't hold it against you. And those of us who yearn for a better way of life, that's more gentle and kind and sustainable and more pro-life across the board. Um, you know, we have all these guns, right? So some guy goes to an event and he shoots a bunch of people and grazes a famous guy. And it's, people wonder, wow, how shocking. But the week before, 13 people were, were shot at another mass uh, shooting event. And 300 and some odd people a day get ki killed, uh, sorry, shot in the United States, and a third of those people die. So it's a common occurrence, right? But it's oh so convenient an occurrence, even if it's just accidental, if it's random, you know, just another nut job with a gun. Uh, it's so convenient for all the spin masters to come up with conspiracy fictions about what happened. And just like with the C thing, the pandemic, uh, everybody was coming up with all kinds of conspiracy fictions before anybody knew anything about the damn pandemic. And as time goes by, we learn more and more and things get ironed out and we have a better picture with 2020 hindsight of what happened during the pandemic. And the same is going to happen this time with this event. But hold your horses, hold on to your seat, Strap in, buckle up, because in a week or so, there's going to be another shocking event brought about by uh, business as usual that everybody's going to get super excited about. And all sides are going to take advantage of this occurrence, this, this happening, this little bit of art, this reality show segment, and they're going to uh, bend it and spin it to their purposes to bolster their narrative, one against the other, uh, and make lots and lots of money in the process. But not for you, my friends. Not for you. So thank you for listening. Have a great week. Boolean tea, out. So this place, making it better and better all the time. So the cuisine was finished. And so we can come here now and BBQ. Yay, baby, yay. Check it out. So yeah, we'll come, come down here, put the uh, chorizo on the barbie. I'm gonna buy some wicked nice steaks and I'm gonna come up here and cook them and play some patank on this particular piece and I'm going to enjoy it.